All right, all the hot peppers, all the banana peppers are all from the garden. The bell peppers are from the store. They're left over from a party we had the other night. So we're gonna get those used today too. We're gonna to get all this processed and into a beautiful product on the shelf. Welcome to Grown Preserve. I'm Carter and I'm so glad you're here today. We are gonna do, I don't even know what to call it anymore. It, this one is hot pepper relish. Well, this one is called hot pepper relish as well. So we're gonna do hot pepper relish. I'm using half hot peppers and half sweet peppers which is the ratio that this one calls for from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. But I'm going to be following this recipe for the most part in terms of the way they do it, the seasonings, that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to use half and half on the peppers because I don't think I can go quite as hot as this one. So this is something that we will put on sandwiches, wraps, roll-ups, what pizza, um, just about anything. Crusty bread with a little olive oil and some hot pepper relish spread. Oh my goodness. So David will probably just eat it with a spoon. <laughs> In addition to all those other ways that I do it for him. So I'm excited about this one. I hope you are too. Now both of these recipes give me the fabulous ease of using the food processor. So thank heavens for that. I can use it for both the peppers and the onions. So I'm hoping that's gonna make life so much easier, far fewer tears, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I think we're gonna make roughly eight half pints, debating whether I should do it in pints or not. I think I'm gonna do it in half pints just because once you open it, I just wanna make sure that we don't lose any because it gets lost in the refrigerator. So I think I'm going to use half pints. This again, you know, servings 128 tablespoons. Well, <laughs> so that is two quarts or four pints or eight half pints. So I'm going to do the eight half pints and see how we do. So this is a water bath canning recipe. I'm going to use a steam canner again. I'm really enjoying that and it seems to be so much easier. I was only going to process for 15 minutes, so the biggest part of this is going to be getting everything chopped. So I'm going to get set up and then we're going to start chopping. We need five and a half cups of peppers, finely diced. So I'm going to start with a couple of the sweet peppers, make sure I get some of those in. Then we'll do the hot peppers and it says seeds and ribs and all, just take out the stem. So I'm going to try that. If it's too hot, I just won't use as much as I put on David's thing, so it's all right. I do like hot peppers on my pizza, my sandwich, a roll up. We like to do lettuce wraps, you know, like Jimmy John's kind of lettuce wraps. We do those at home. And I really like hot peppers on that. Turkey lettuce wrap, yum. Even better if it has bacon in the middle. I'm just kind of hunking these into big, big chops. And then we'll see, I don't want to get this too fine. The reason I'm not strictly going by the National Center for Home Preservation one is because they, let's see, what do they call it? They grind the peppers and the onions. And it's a really mushy, mushy looking, ugly green thing. So I'm not going to do that. But the recipes are, the rest of it is similar enough. I'm just, mine's going to be prettier, I hope. Okay, so I'm wondering if I'm wondering how much of the peppers are going to be blended together in terms of color. I don't want to end up with red and green blended together and then I get brown, right? So I'm going to do Mostly reds in this batch, and then we'll blend the greens, not blend, we'll finally chop the greens separately. This is a red hot cherry. Woohoo, look at all those seeds. That's one of my favorites to put on a sandwich. I'm not 
getting too close to these peppers, so I'm not wearing gloves. I may regret that, but hopefully not. I'm gonna turn the sound down for you so I don't blast you out. Yeah, I don't think I want it ground down any farther than that. It sure smells good. All right. So this is red and some orange. I'm going to do the rest of these orange and the yellow together, and then we'll do the green. Oops. So it says juices and all. Pretty nice for a relish. You can see that. I'll see if I can zoom in on it. All right, let's get the rest of the orange and yellow peppers done. These have all come in over the last couple of days. I've had a ton of rain and everything has just exploded in the garden. stays once it's canned. I don't want to just lose all those beautiful colors. The lights are flickering again. We've had so many storms. Okay, so I have the red ones and the orange and yellow ones in there. And if I spread that out evenly, let's see where we are. Four and a half pounds. We're gonna have plenty. All right, let's put these green ones in there. These are jalapenos, obviously. I have three different kinds of jalapenos in my garden. Craig's Grande, which I'm finding is really not so grande, and Jedi and Halafuego. Halafuego and Jedi I have grown for years. They're a hybrid from Johnny's. Love them. Uh, Craig's Grande is my first year growing that, and you know the plants aren't huge. They get the striations or wrinkles or whatever you want to call them pretty early on, and the peppers get I don't know they're a little squattier. They're a little squattier, a little smaller than what I like. You know, there's the difference. So I really like the Jedi and the Halafuego. I found another one. I've already been ordering seeds for next year which I know sounds absolutely crazy. But as people talk about their favorite seeds of the year, I'm gonna go ahead and get them. So that's what I've been doing. So I have some, I think they're called salsa peppers, salsa hot peppers maybe, coming for, well, they're here for next year. And then there was uh, some other pe <coughs> pepper. Oh, a monstrous banana pepper. Uh, that I ordered, and then of course I kept shopping because it was, I don't know, 11:30 at night, and I could. So I went online to order two types of peppers for next year, and I think I got 30 packages of seeds. Only those two little peppers that I that I went for. I didn't order multiple packages of anything because I haven't tried it. I got a bunch of other tomatoes. I got a bunch of determinate tomatoes because I'm really enjoying 
having more determinate tomatoes that are slicers in my garden this year. It's kind of nice. I don't have to deal with the strings. I don't have to deal with all the pruning. And, you know, I can get a couple of batches in if I had planned. I didn't plan very well for it this year, except for my romas. But, I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like that. So, I bought a bunch of seeds. And I love seeds. I have a bit of a seed fetish. So, I, this year, I narrow down my pepper selections of what I was growing so that I could grow enough of any one thing. Um, and that was good, but I just don't think I'm growing enough peppers all the way around. So next year I'm going to do more peppers and probably put the determinate tomatoes, get some in earlier and then plant some a little bit later so that I can have them throughout the season because at some point the heat or disease or something is going to take my earlings and then I'll be without right. Ooh, I know the fumes are going to get me on this one <laughs> all right let's see if I can get that into the measuring cup without checking on it. Okay. All right, so I'm a little over six cups, so we're gonna call that, call that good. Looks like I'm right at six cups on that side. All right, that's what we're going with now. We have to do onions also in the food processor, thankfully. All right, I'm going to set this aside. Don't need my banana peppers, so I'll stick those back in the fridge. All right, we need two cups of onions, so I have four smallish onions from the garden. I'm just going to kind of hunk these up like I did the peppers. Throw them in. I hate that I can do this without tearing up. to get me. <laughs> and kids are killing me. Alright, I have two cup measure here. Sweet onions. These are called candy. Growing up, we would always use Vidalia onions, but can't grow Vidalia onions outside of Vidalia, Georgia. So I grew candy onions. All right, that's a little over two cups. My peppers are a little over. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to go fix the tears. <laughs> we'll be back at this. All right, so that was three kind of smallish onions made. Two and a half cups, maybe. All right, so I'm going to go get a big pot. I'm going to bring you over here, and we're going to get all the rest of the ingredients put together, and I'm going to try to clean up my mess a little bit. So I just went through the whole thing of adding all the seasonings, mixing it up. 
and I forgot to turn the camera on. So I am so sorry. Let me tell you what's in here. I have one and a half cups of sugar is what the recipe calls for. You know me. Uh, I used allulose because David is sugar free. So one and a half cups of sugar, one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of, you can't even see that, but it's just mustard powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons, oh, I'm sorry, one and a half teaspoons of celery seed. And I don't know if the camera was on when I added the apple cider vinegar or not. Um, but because I was a little over on my peppers and onions, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. I did one and three quarters cups after calculating what I needed to do to adjust for pH. So I added the one and three quarters cups of this, mixed it all together, and now I'm gonna put it on the stove and it's gonna bring it to a boil and let it simmer for 20 minutes. I have some brand new half pint jars for this, so I need to get those in some soapy water, get them cleaned up and ready to go and then I'll get the steam canner ready because we're going to use that again today and I'm hoping for eight half pints I don't know give or take I'm a little over we'll see how it turns out but I'll meet you over at the stove all right I'm going to take you over to the stove in a second but I want to talk to you a second about the steam canner first because I had lots of questions in the video a couple of videos ago about the steam canner and one of my favorite things about this is how light it is. I mean, it just, I promise you, it doesn't weigh more than two pounds. It's just, it's light and easy. I store it on the top shelf. I don't think you can see this, but over my microwave on the very top shelf, and I can easily lift it up, bring it down without worry about knocking myself out. So anyway, one of the many things I love about this. All right, this is just coming up to a light boil. And make sure it's fully up to a boil and then I'm going to turn it down to a simmer and we're going to let it go for 20 minutes. See I have some bigger chunks of onion. I don't think we're going to care. So far it's holding its color reasonably well. Okay so there's my boil. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit and I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes. Oops, I don't want to lose my simmer altogether. See it on this side. All right, so here's my simmer. We're going to let that go for 20 minutes, and I'll have those jars ready, and then we'll come back and jar it up. I overfilled my uh, steam canner because I was paying attention to how pretty that was. So I'm going to take care of that too. I have a lot to do while this works. All right, I'll be back. This is finished. It's 20 minutes on a low simmer. It's definitely losing some of its color, but hopefully it's still going to be beautiful in the jar. All right, I'm going to pull the jars out of the steam canner. They are hot and ready to go, and we'll get these loaded up. Optimistically, 10 jars in my canner. Probably won't get that many. Eight is pretty much what the recipe called for. Because I went over a little bit, I thought, well, maybe I'll get lucky. But you know how that goes. So we're going to do four at a time and see how this goes. I'll keep the heat in my canner. So I'm going to make sure that every jar has plenty of relish in it and then plenty of liquid. And we're going to half inch head space. So I was looking at the two, whoops, the two recipes I've been kind of bouncing around between here. And one of them has a 15 minute processing time, the other has a 10 minute processing time. The 10 minute is the National Center for Home Preservation. So I think I'm going to go with a 10 minute processing time on these. All my ratios are still good for that. I just want to maintain as much of the color as I can and as much of the crunch as I can. So I think I'll be better at 10 minutes. Let's 
debubble these. Looking for half inch head space. Good. I'm going to clean these up, make sure I don't have any little bits on them. All right, now new drawers. So I have some meals that came with them. I hope the best. Check in each of these lids really well. Make sure there are no dents in it. There's no errant uh, rubber in there. ready to go as soon as I get all of these loaded. So I wanted to give you a couple of quick notes here while I'm filling these jars. The first is that since I didn't add the sweet banana peppers to my mix because I had plenty already, I was a bit skewed more toward the hot peppers, maybe even as much as 60% hot, 40% uh, sweet. So you adjust, alter, change anything you need to in terms of the variety of peppers to suit your taste. So both of these recipes that I'm gonna link down below give plenty of leeway for using different types of peppers. Now, at the risk of blowing the punchline, I'm gonna tell you as I'm editing this 10 days later, that this was a perfect heat level for me. I'll also tell you that we have already finished three of these half pints and I'll be making another batch as soon as I have enough peppers. So stay tuned till the end for the initial taste test. This one's a winner. process for 10 minutes plus whatever your adjustment for altitude is and then at the end of your time you turn off the stay and take the lid off this one I have to leave it on as part of the processing time all right so we'll be back when these are done hope they're still beautiful when they come out they process for 10 minutes and then sat for five you can hear them popping they're still pretty that's good Oh, you can see a little bit of that. That's not bad. They're all popping, so that's really good news. All right, so I have 10 of these based on the number of peppers I used. The recipe called for eight half pints. And as I said, I went a little bit over. We spent, I don't know, this didn't take very long. Maybe an hour, hour and a half or so, start to finish really easy loves using the food processor for the peppers and the onions although i did get a bit of crying done but piece of cake so i hope you'll give this a try and you know even use all sweet peppers if you want add more sugar if you want it um i think it's going to be good i think it's going to be something that we're really going to enjoy having on our shelf all right hot 
pepper relish. We're going to do a taste test. Now normally I would wait a while, let this kind of meld together, let some of the heat die back a bit, but I had a jar that didn't seal. So I'm going to try it today on a sandwich and we'll see if smoke comes out my ears. So let's talk about the jar not sealing first. It is a, it's a ball, you can't see that, that's a big glare, but anyway, it's a, it's a ball lid. So my natural instinct is to blame the ball lid, but I don't think that's the case here. I was very good about checking the lids before I put them on. I think it was user error. So I used the steam canner and it's relatively new to me and there is, there is an edge, a margin that you need to keep with your jars when you load them in so you can't like push the jars all the way to the edge like you can in a water bath canner. And I think I, I don't know that margin yet so when I brought the lid down I did knock a couple of jars and that's my best guess as to how I messed this one up. Alright, so now, now we're going to see if I'm going to pay for that. Alright, I got some turkey at the store. It looks great. Looks could be deceptive. <laughs> so let's see. It's hot. <coughs> it's hot to eat on a spoon. <laughs> But it may be great on a sandwich. So I'm gonna try it on the sandwich. My eyes are gonna start watering already. I'm gonna bring it down, we'll make a sandwich, and then I'll try this on the sandwich. Alright, let's do this. So I'm looking back at this now and laughing at myself. I was really kind of nervous that this was gonna to be too hot for me. So I was trying to add a ton of mayo to try to help smooth it out, lots of extra turkey. I just put a little dollop of relish on there. But anyway, you'll see, keep watching. All right, I'm gonna cut this and we're gonna give it a shot. It doesn't look like I put very much. It felt like a lot when I was spreading it on there. Okay, let's try. I could use some more. Honestly. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more. Hope I didn't just get a light batch. It's really offset though with the turkey and the mayo and the bread which is how you're supposed to eat it, no, you know, not on a spoon. Probably well, David probably eat it on a spoon. Okay, oops, upside down. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. It's actually delicious. It is really delicious. I normally put um, hot pickled peppers on my sandwich, roll up, whatever, whether I'm doing it as a lettuce wrap or a regular wrap or sandwich or whatever. This was a lot easier to put on and keep on. You know, the pickled peppers just kind of fall out the bottom. It's delicious. It is really, really good. So we'll see what David thinks. It may not be strong enough for him in a sandwich, but he will put it on some... I don't know, some chips or something, and eat it for sure, and love it. So, it's a good one. <laughs> Despite my earlier face I made, it's a good one. Make it. I'm addicted. I had to have this same darn wrap. This is the same turkey wrap. Not the same one, obviously, but this is the same thing I had for lunch yesterday, for dinner last night, and for lunch again today. And... That is what I have done. I have put a big dent in my hot pepper relish and I am loving this stuff. I have learned my lesson about ever trying to eat it on a spoon, which is just, just don't do that. <laughs> it, will, it will blow the top of your head off. But on a sandwich, it's great. I keep putting more and more on my wraps and I'm just absolutely loving it. it it's one of the most fun condiments I've done in a long time. So I hope you'll give that a try.